Welcome to another video lecture. Today we will discuss about the new module and the topic is foundation. Hopefully you all have watched the previous section. Even if you didn't watch, please go and watch. So <clears throat> when we are going to discuss about foundation, first of all, this is already we discussed about the term foundation. Where the components of building, we can classify buildings into three components. First one is substructure then other name is called foundation then plinth and superstructure and here we will discuss about this foundation and already we also discussed about the different functions of foundation what is the important functions of foundation why we are providing these foundations first of all even distribution of load the load which is going to happen over the foundation should be equally divided that is even distribution of load then second point is reduction of differential settlement. The settlement of this uh, settlement of this building should not be differentiated such that the reduction should be reduced. And the third point is safety against overturning. Overturning means it should not be rotated due to some uh, earthquakes likewise. So it should be it gives some strength to the building, building or any other property. Then firm and level surface, it should provide firm surface and also level surface and safety against undermining means it should also ensure the flood water to be entered. It should not, it should not allow the flood water to be entered. And then coming to another important term related with the foundation is bearing capacity of soil. What do you mean by bearing capacity of soil? How much the soil can withstand the building or any construction property? So, a supporting power of soil without any failure. So, the meaning is that how much the soil can withstand the holding capacity of soil. That is called the bearing capacity. Here one example is given. Soft rock, the value is 450 km per meter square. And the gravel is 250 to 450. So the maximum value, the bearing capacity value is, you can see that the soft rock, the rock can hold the maximum load. Okay, so we will construct over this, soft rock is very good for the construction. If the foundation is very soft rock, it can hold down lot of power, lot of weight. Okay, then coming to the different types of foundation, we can classify foundation into shallow and deep. In this video section, we will discuss about the shallow foundation. In the second part, we will discuss about deep foundation. So, what do you mean by shallow and what do you mean by deep foundation? Let us give. As the name indicates, the shallow means the depth will be very less when compared with the breadth or width. Width of foundation. That means the depth of foundation will be very less when compared with the width. And in the case of deep foundation, depth will be, as the name indicates, the depth will be very large when compared with the width. So, here we will discuss about the first one, shallow foundation. Shallow foundation means, if you take the, uh, if the foundation, its depth will be very less when compared with its width. The depth value will be very less when compared with the width. And here, the first one is isolated or column footing. What do you mean by that? Isolated or column footing. If only one column can be withstand under a footing, that is called isolated or column footing. This is used for used for this single column. This foundation is used for holding this single footing. This can be of any shape. This is stepped footing. Its shape is in the step, step and here it is trapezoidal. Then here it is shown plan, plan view and this is elevation. What do you mean by plan and what do you mean by elevation? Elevation means the front view and the plan means its top view. Okay. So after this video lecture, please go through your textbook portion also. So the picture will be clarity. In your exam point of view, this uh, for the last exam, uh, it is asked that write down any two or three with the diagram. The sketches are very important. 
So then coming to second one is wall or strip footing. As the name indicates, the foundation is given, and if you can construct a long wall, okay, that is called a wall footing. Then coming to combined footing, as the name indicates, we can hold down two or more columns. That is here, two columns or more columns, and the shape will be uh, the foundation shape can be trapezoidal or rectangular. And then coming to continuous footing, if you can hold down a RCC structure, RCC means re reinforced. The foundation is given reinforced into concrete. Okay, already we, the steel presence also we will provide here to hold down. Continuous column support, so that is called a continuous footing. Then next one is cantilever. If the bearing capacity of soil, if here it is very high and sometimes it is very low, so to hold down two columns, we will consider a strap. Strap means a beam is provided in between these two in these two foundation. So to hold down those two columns, and that is called a cantilever footing. And then coming to inverted arch footing. In the case of bridges, or we will consider this inverted arch footing in the shape of inverted shape. And coming to grillage foundation in railway platforms, we are giving rolled steel joints. Rolled steel joints means in the shape of an I section. In the shape of I section we will provide under this foundation. Under means. Uh, in, the, in the foundation, we will provide this rolled steel joist. So, please go through the figure also in the test book. Joist, rolled steel joist. And the last one is raft or mat foundation. Raft or mat foundation we are using in our construction in our our household are constructed using this raft or mat foundation. Here, in the column and this. Foundation is connected using this reinforcement like this way. Okay, so this is the overall picture of shallow foundation, and the second part we will discuss about the deep foundation. So I hope all of you are clear. With this, we will conclude today's section. Thank you.